My guest today is Mohammed Masood. He's uh, owner of Elite Physical Therapy located in New York, New Jersey. Hello, Mohammed, how are you? Hi, Dimitri, how are you? Okay, great. Uh, so Mohammed, he uh, has a bachelor's degree in exercise science from Rutgers. Uh, he has a doctorate de degree in physical therapy from um, University of New Jersey of uh, Medicine and Dentistry. So Mohammed, tell us about your clinic. So it's located in Jersey. Uh, what kind of population do you serve uh, in, uh, in your clinic? We see a varying population. I would say uh, more in the 30 to, to 60 range, uh, but we also see a lot of young athletes, uh, 18 and under teenagers. Uh, we also have a, a small percentage, about probably 10 or 15 of geriatric population that come in with your basic aches, your back pains, your things like that. You said bariatric or geriatric? Geriatric. Geriatric. Your older population. Got it. Understood. Okay. Uh, and when did your clinic open? We opened in 2014, mm -hmm. uh, March of 2014. Actually, we just uh, hit our landmark of about six and a half, uh, five and a half, six and a half years. Can't believe mm -hmm. it. Got it. So it's been a while. Okay. Yeah. Well, congrats. So, in terms of work prior to opening your clinic, what were you doing? What uh, what did you work before that? And what led you to open up your own clinic? So I was working for a, a company, uh, it was like sports care, and they have about 35 or 40 clinics here. I worked there, sports I did my clinical sports. rotation. Sorry, sports care? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, it was one of those kind of companies uh, that you see in kind of every state, there's about four or five chains. So sports care is one of the bigger chains in New Jersey. Uh, I worked there for about a year and a half. I had also done my student affiliation there. Uh, so they already were familiar with me in that office. So I just continued working there for about a year and a half. And I guess I felt like I didn't, there was no room to grow. Um, really, it was only becoming a PT or a director. Uh, there's not really more of a, a ladder to grow, especially in the PT world. So uh, I got an offer from uh, another therapist to kind of go in with them to be a PT alongside a podiatrist, an acupuncturist, a chiropractor. And we opened up an office uh, in a, inside of a gym in Princeton. So we went down to Princeton, we opened it up. Uh, we ran that for about, I would say close to a year and a half, two years. And then I decided it was time to kind of branch on my own and, and do my, my own thing. Nobody else involved, just kind of my own baby clinic. Mohammed, thank you. So, so I moved up to... Uh, the gym, it was it a standalone gym or is a franchise type of uh, gym? So they only, it was a private owned gym, but it was, they had three branches in New Jersey. It was called uh, Can Do Fitness. Mm -hmm. So it was a really nice premier gym. Uh, it, was a, it was like a $20 million gym that had state of the yard everything. So mm. we were um, hitting a different time of demographic. Actually, I was, when I was there, I got to train with the uh, Olympic US uh, women's soccer team. Uh, I treated uh, former NFL athletes. I treated a lot of lacrosse players, crew members mm -hmm. from the Princeton rowing team. So it was a very great experience in terms of uh, getting my, my experience with the athletes and how they train and how they work. And, and I'm, assu and then, I'm assuming that was private pay or you were accepting insurances as well? We were accepting insurance as well. You were accepting insurance. Uh, actually, most of them were insurance based, yeah. Huh, okay, okay. And then, so after how yeah. many years did you, uh, you opened up Elite Physical Therapy? So after that time, I, I guess I, I graduated in 2008 and I ended up opening 2014. So it was a good about, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 2008. So about six years until I finally opened up this clinic. Mm -hmm. Got it, understood. And you had no partners here yeah. in Elite. It was uh, by yourself, you, you did it you by no yourself, partners. right? Okay, and you still have no, you still have no partners, I'm assuming, right? No, not yet, no. Okay, and uh, so for other listeners that are interested in opening up a clinic, uh, what was your initial investment to open up this clinic? So it wasn't much. Uh, I believe that the initial investment was about thirty to 35000 and that was in order to get everything in order. Uh, I did not buy a lot of new equipment. I sought after you know, clinics that, let's say, have closed up or gyms that had sure. used equipment. I took it from them. Um, the construction costs were very minimal. It was just a basic open space. Uh, we kept a basic front desk. I didn't try to do anything fancy in the beginning. 
uh, because the advantage of physical therapy is that if it doesn't work out for any reason, there's high demand, you close up shop, mm -hmm. you cut your losses, and you go work for a company right. again. Right, right, right. So I kept things minimal. And then as things, you know, progressed and we got better and busier, uh, I started replacing the old equipment with newer equipment and uh, just mm -hmm. so on and so forth until we ended up moving locations. Uh, we moved to another side or a bigger space. Sorry, and, so uh, that wasn't the this is not the original location. You open up in the same no. uh, shopping center, but in a different uh, store? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. They have two sides to the shopping plaza. So we moved to the other side uh, next to a doctor's office and it's mm -hmm. a busier side and more square footage. So we were mm -hmm. able to expand a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions a lot of people, a lot of clients ask me all the time, oh, should I go all in or should I, you know, uh, keep my full-time job? Uh, how did you do it? Did you keep a okay. full-time job or part-time job? And, uh, you know, how did you go about opening so, it? Uh, I, I called myself the uh, PT assassin for a little bit because I did a lot of part-time at like eight different clinics. You know, I worked uh, three different private cares. I even worked in one that was in the airport. I did home care. Uh, I taught at, uh, at my alma mater at UMDNJ. I was a TA okay. there. So I did a lot of those little things to allow me flexibility in terms of scheduling. Sure. When I opened here, I did the skeleton schedule. So I opened up Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, a couple of hours to kind of introduce myself. We even had like a period of about three weeks or so where we did like a soft opening. So patients who wanted to come in, they kind of just knew that we were open, we were there. Uh, and then our official opening was like three weeks into the like, end of March where we were actually almost there three days a week. And then about, I want to say November is where I decided, all right, let's go five days a week. I kind of was able to leave all the other positions and gave this my 100%. Mm -hmm. So you would say it took you a little over six months to go all in, right? Full time. Yeah, yeah, it took six months or so to go all That's in. That's good. That's actually and, good and it was luck. Progress. I mean, I know, yeah, I know a lot of people who still are on the schedule skeleton after like a yes. year and a half. Yes. So right, exactly. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so luck is great, but I'm sure it was something else. Like, is it just the visibility, or is it the location? <laughs> uh, what's what 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 contributed to that? So I, I'll tell you, it's funny. I thought that location was going to be great. We were in a shopping plaza. We were next to all the food places. All the doctors were coming in to mm -hmm. eat their lunch. And I thought, for sure, someone's going to be seeing it. They're going to say, what is this place? That did not happen. Uh, till this day, people could come to me and say, I've been coming to this plaza for food for six, seven years. I've never noticed you guys. Because when you don't need physical therapy, you don't right, know where right, the physical right, therapy right. clinics are. But the location is convenient because it's a lot of parking and in Newark, that's hard to come by, right? So there's a lot of parking, it's ground level. So if you're wheelchair bound, if you just came off the surgery, it's an easy walk in, no problem. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a lot of it was two different things. It was word of mouth. And it was also that we were accepting all the insurances and a lot of the places around here in, in Newark, uh, it's predominantly Medicare population in terms of insurances, Medicaid, I'm sorry. So the HMOs and the Medicares, so the fact that we were able to get a lot of the people who were coming, who were not, who were denied from other clinics because they had Medicaid only, they were able to come here. And on the caveat is that we were able to provide quality care instead of just kind of a, a, a like a mill. intermediate or yeah. kind of just, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. I didn't want to say it. But yeah, that's know, fine. Listen, there's so clinicians so we were, listening, so they know the term. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So we were trying to avoid the whole mill thing. Um, a lot of the hospitals were the only ones that could accept Medicaid. And so the hospitals, I know people who were on wait for three months after surgery, couldn't get an appointment for their first evaluation. So we were dead set on just becoming a quality clinic in this area that just because you had Medicaid, you weren't getting less care. Mm -hmm. And I think that word took off and people started to see what we were doing. And, you know, even though insurances was a great reference point, uh, I would say it turned about six, seven months in when word of mouth became the main reason why people mm -hmm. started coming in. Wow. Built impressive. Very there. impressive. Yeah. I mean, uh, good care goes a long way, I guess, you know, you have quality yeah. care. Good okay. atmosphere also. I'm sure. Okay. So uh, I, want, I would like to talk about pandemic now and how is uh, your business affected with pandemic and what numbers are you seeing now? So what percentage of your caseload are you seeing now versus March or February of the year? Yeah, so um, I want to say when, so we were doing fine January, February. When March hit, 
I want to say by the third or fourth week by, of March, we are probably down to about 60%. And then by April, we were basically zero. I mean, we were seeing, uh, you know, three, four patients a day. It was just basically came to a halt. So we closed during the months of uh, April and May, opened up at the end of May. And I think uh, I also did telehealth at home. So that was good. Okay, okay. got it. Yeah, mm -hmm. we did that. Uh, I want to say by like, End of May, June, people started to come in. Currently, we're still at about, we're probably back up to about 60%, I would say, mm -hmm. closer to 70, mm -hmm. uh, still trying to ramp up. But we're also only doing three days a week, five hours, okay. or six hours a day. Got it. So, okay. You're not yeah. a full um, schedule yet. Still, not a full schedule yet, not even a full staff yet. It's still been, you know, hit or miss. Uh, mm -hmm. Something like, uh, mm -hmm. I, I know in, in Jersey yesterday, we just had a hurricane. So yeah. things like that really we had it in New York as well yesterday. Yeah, a lot of cancellations okay, so yeah. from some clinics. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we get the cancellations. And then on top of that, it's summertime. So we get a lot of people who just aren't coming in. Right. It's, summer. Also it's the pandemic, then it's the summer, then it's the hurricane. I was just saying that yesterday. It's always something. Yeah. Yeah, it's always that. We were climbing. Uh, June was a great month. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, I'm starting to feel like, and then it just plummeted yeah, again, yeah, kind of. Yeah. So All right. It was September hold. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how many people work for you? Uh, let's talk about pre-pandemic numbers. Okay. Uh, so pre-pandemic, you talk about staff. Uh, pre-pandemic, we had two office staff, two aides, and a part-time PT. Mm -hmm. oh, so you actually so hired we were, someone we were, to help you with treatments. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He was doing about like 20 hours a week helping mm -hmm. us out. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were looking to help make him grow. He was actually a former student of mine. So mm -hmm. it was uh, an easy easy transition. He was growing sure. and my goal was to get them to be business owners. That's, right. that's kind of my goal right Very now. Good. So we were on that track. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you about my spiel, but I was on track for him to be a business owner, to continue the, to be his own owner, not to work for a company. Absolutely. And then this pandemic kind of came right in the middle and mm -hmm. it, uh, it just kind of shut everything down. Definitely. I understand. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough. Definitely tough. A lot of clinics out yeah. there. Uh, and how many square feet is your office space? Uh, we are at 1,600 square feet. 1,500? 1,600, yeah. 1,600, okay. And, uh, and then you guys, uh, so pre-pandemic, uh, how many patients a week would you see? How many, you know, serve, uh, treatments, I should say. How many? Treatments a week uh, pre-pandemic. So pre-pandemic, we were probably at about, I'd say anywhere between 100 to 120, depending on mm -hmm. the type of uh, the type of week, basically. Got it. On a, an average between 100 yeah. to 120. Got it. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, depending pretty, on the day. And yeah, I mean, pretty, yeah. pretty busy. Yeah, pretty busy. And as you say, it's, you had 60% now. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, and you guys, so what do you use for documentation and practice management? Uh, what PT? I'm sure right. a lot of people use that. One. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah, very, yeah, very well-known system. Sure, and then software, correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you use the scheduling feature and uh, you know the reporting system as well for business operations. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and, we use the reporting and the scheduling. Uh -huh. So one of the very, very common questions that I have from uh, a lot of clients is uh, should I do my own billing or should I outsource? What is it that you do? Do you outsource your billing or you do uh, billing internally? No, I do, I use TheraBill, which is actually through WebPT. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, before I used to use my own software, the Medisoft software. And Medisoft, right, right. put each one manually. Right, right. right. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but then when TheraBill came along, it was so much easier. It was kind of like a, right. sounds like I'm making it's, a it's integrated, but sure. Yeah, yeah. nice. Sure, sure, yeah. Very, yeah, very easy integrated. So, mm -hmm. and the fact that PTs, you know, we, we only use like four, a handful of codes, right? It's not like we're, we're using many different codes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once you do your note, it's already in there. You're literally just clicking a couple of buttons and it bills it for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think back in the day, there was a lot of uh, outsourcing billing companies that would come mm -hmm. along and mm -hmm. uh, offer to take 3%, 3.5%. Uh, but I felt that... The national average is 7%, just so it. you know. Set national average is seven percent now. Okay, so that's seven. Yeah, I, well, I was going to say six because 
I was going to say six, uh, the company that we used back when I was in Princeton, they used to say mm -hmm. 6%. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was highway robbery. Mm -hmm. because it was just, mm -hmm. it wasn't that hard to build. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I, I, yeah, so I totally, I totally I agree with you. However, uh, with, with the certain clinics, have a huge rate of denials depending on insurances that they uh, bill. Although you do have, it seems like you have various insurance, Medicaid based insurances as well. And a lot of it is billing is, I tell all, all, all clients that billing is not complicated. It's the collections process that could be time consuming, right? We could get a denial, you have to do an appeal and the insurances, they authorize five, uh, 97110 code and three of those codes. And it's always that, oh no, we authorized, uh, the CPT codes, not the dates of services. And it's like, you know, it's that back and forth. And then, like you said, if you have one location yeah, yeah. and you know, you're a physical therapist and you're an admin and you're everything else, billing is something, you know, a lot of, a lot of therapists don't want to take care of. And they're like, you know what, screw it. Let me just outsource it. So that's, that's what I found in a lot of clinics. It's easier to do that. But actually the funny part is the company that was charging a 6% was just doing the billing. Uh, they weren't, looking up authorization. So that was, that's a whole different realm. That's why uh, seven and a half percent, I guess, comes in. Mm -hmm. But uh, I actually hired someone, I call her my bulldog. She is the sec she's the one who goes after the companies, right? So I personally do the manual billing, right? Because I know what <laughs> so you submit I billing yourself. Yeah, you submit manual. your own billing. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I submit the billing and then she follows up uh, with any, with anything that's not covered. So we actually have a spreadsheet has all the dates of service. And then anytime we get uh, EOB or EO, EOP, she just puts it in, in that like, you know, in, in every Sorry, slot. So you, you, you use like an Excel, it's not part of WebPT or Therabill? No, mm -hmm. no, it's not. Because they don't actually, what's interesting is so I got Therabill thinking that Therabill was gonna be able to organize that posting. for me. It's called the posting. Very, There's no posting involved? So it's posting, but the way the posts happen, it doesn't give me a nice overall view. So I, I like to be, I like to kind of take a nice, uh -huh step back and say what patient came in what day did they get paid what they got Understood. paid for that so got it very they don't good. give you a nice layout like that yeah. it's very broken down into mm -hmm. codes got it okay so we still post the payment uh but it doesn't give me a nice like so what we got do it. is we take at the end of the month we take the web pt billing report we transfer it right into an excel sheet sure so then all the dates all the Makes names, sense. everything yeah. is right there yeah and then we fill it in all the payments it takes her probably about uh two hours to kind got of get it. the whole month filled in yeah and then we go from there we see what visits are missing and then we know exactly it's a nice snapshot of who we need to call and go after what day right right is. okay very good yeah actually with with hello note is the same concept you know the posting is the posting is done we use ability which is the clearing house and the posting gets okay. done and you could export it to excel and there's an option of build and paid so you uncheck paid to see what was billed but not paid and that's how you run your reports to see who still uh, owes your money which and then, software is that it's hello node. That's the software that I'm on board of. Yeah. Okay. So, and then ability okay. is the clearing house. You could log in, uh, something I guess like Therabill is where you could see, also see those reports as well. If there's any, you know, deductibles, co pays and everything mm -hmm. post. Okay. So very good. So let me, uh, so referrals again, very, mm -hmm. very hot topic in physical therapy. You know, I have those physical yeah. therapists that like say doctors are the best referral sources and those, uh, physical therapists that tell me doctors are their enemies. What, is your best referral source? Uh, is it doctors uh, or is it word of mouth or is it you know social media marketing, radio, I, TV? It's uh, so so. I think if I had to rate them, I would say people calling me just because the insurance gave them our name. Uh, that's mm. that's still pretty up there. Mm, um, but then also, but doctors are also high on that list as well. Mm. Like I couldn't differentiate which is which because doctors that I deal with, a lot of them just say, here's your list, go to elite. Like they don't even uh, kind of give them a list of other doctors. They just say, go to elite, don't waste your time with these guys. But do you keep uh, so track of, do do you keep track of those referrals? Who comes from where? Yeah. Yeah, I constantly look at the referral log too on WebPT to see what doctors are. You know, if I feel like a doctor used to send us a lot and then started calling, sure. I'll, I'll pay him a visit sure. so I can see what's going on. Makes sense. Uh, but for the most part, um, we're across the street from the hospital, from the UMD hospital, mm. which they have a huge load of orthopedic doctors. And uh, between you and I and everyone who's watching this, they don't trust the PTs that are there, the clinic, because of the long wait, the, the, the right. most kind of service. Right. The so hospital when, service, right, of course. 
Yeah. So when they do their surgeries, they give them my name. They say it's right across the street. You could come here. You can go across the street and just go to them. and They'll take care of you. So we get a lot of, I can't say doctors are my enemies for the most part. Right. We do so push you, our that's game smart. Yeah. Like I think and, it's, it's, I, I, I agree with you. You got to utilize doctors. They could be very helpful uh, and definitely, you know, other sources of uh, referrals. Okay. Uh, so speaking of other sources, uh, do you spend any money on marketing, uh, social media or any other sources of marketing? So we do, uh, in the beginning, I did everything I possibly could. I did newspaper, I did print media, internet. I, I literally printed out flyers and put them on people's cars. I put them on the floor to kind of attract attention. I did everything humanly possible to get my name out there. Uh, we did block parties. Newark has these community block parties. We went uh -huh. there. I offered five minute gait and mouth, massages, anything just to, and it was Sorry, minimal. Speaking of block parties, I don't think they work. Very many. Tell me if I'm wrong. Do they work? No. They don't, right? I just want to confirm because I've, right. I've done they my do own survey. Work. They don't work. Okay, good. Moving on. <laughs> Does it work? I, I, I tried it. <laughs> I wasted like six hours giving out massages in yeah. the heat and doing <laughs> I trigger know. points. And yes, man, yes, yes. It's, We've uh, done this one of the clinics when I used to manage uh, a clinic. Yeah, I don't know, a few years ago. Yeah. We've done that before. Okay. But I think, so I think the, the, the so like we have an Instagram account. We do social media. We have Facebook where we have Twitter. We, we try to post articles. I think the major handicap of all PTs is that not enough people nationally know what we do. Uh, like you ask the average person, they just think you go to us when you get surgery, when you get hurt, uh, and that's it. We're in the hospital, we help you walk. No one knows the, uh, the knowledge that we have and what we actually can do. No one really looks at us as movement specialists, you know? Sure. Uh, so I think that you could put all the media out there you could do all the advertisements and like i said people walk by this clinic for six years don't even notice we're here because they don't looking for physical therapy it's not on their mind they, they only think of us like when they break an ankle or, or sprain mm -hmm. their back but even when they sprain their back they're going to look to a chiropractor before they i was going to i was going to say that a chiropractor you know people like oh my back is hurting how can i find a chiropractor a lot of them not even aware that a lot of chiros car uh treatment are not covered by insurance sources PT, for instance, yeah. or a lot of, I hear friends telling me, oh, I went to chiropractor for my shoulder. And I'm like, really? For your shoulder and not to a physical therapist? Okay. Uh, that's new. Yeah. You know, so that's. Well, I've seen, I've heard of people, I had my back surgery and I went to a chiro for three months. And I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm thrown. I, I don't know what to say to yeah, that. Yeah, like post surgery, and, why? And, yeah. Uh, and knees, they say, oh, I went for my knee, I went for my ankle. I can't figure out how that was even possible. But I'm, I, I'm always trying to educate. My, my own wife did not know what I do until she heard her back. <laughs> and, Interesting. And I did it. She goes, yeah, she thought that I was going to massage her, right? And I worked <laughs> on her back. I did, a muscle, I did a muscle energy. She goes, no, no, like dig your elbow or something. I said, no, this is what I do. And when I, when I did it and she felt better, she was so blown. She goes, what, what was that? And then I just kept educating her. So it took me two years to educate my own wife on what I do as a therapist. So there's, I just don't feel that people are well educated as to what we do. And it's on us, you know, we need to, I think, do better advertising. Uh, and on my Instagram account, I'm constantly just posting, not just videos of people doing exercise, but it's videos of me manipulating, me doing a, a, a glide, a technique, and then videos of me working out with the patient. So you can kind of see that we're not just a bunch of tables cracking necks and backs, but we're also, you know, there's a, there's a gym aspect, there's a fitness aspect, there's a, a CrossFit aspect, there's a PT aspect, there's all your worlds that you mm -hmm. think of us, massage and chiro, yeah, we're yeah. all in one. I, I, lo and, I love and, this. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be, definitely. So there, there's a cultural component to it, you know, depending on certain cultures yeah. think it's massage. Because a lot of, it's, and it, oh, yeah. I got to say, like, although a lot of people are not educated on physical therapy, a lot of doctors don't even know what physical therapy is, especially foreign grad yeah. doctors, right? They think, oh, 
you know, here, physical therapy for if you have back pain, they don't realize that there's a bunch of other things they can refer uh, patients to physical therapy. Yeah. So that cultural component in educating those uh, specialists that, you know, graduated from a different country or even uh, patients that, you know, not aware there's anything else besides massage that physical therapists do. And it's expensive. Educating a yeah. consumer or a patient in our case, right? It's expensive and it's time consuming, but that's, that's the goal. All right. I mean, chiropractors did a great job of advertising their, their field, right? They do. They they're, do. they're known as yeah. the back specialists. They, they yep. do a great job at that. Sure, sure, yeah. exactly. Uh, so tell me, how many, so again, pre-COVID, how many hours a week would you say you work uh, before COVID? How many hours did you work? Oh, well, me, as a PT, I was putting in about 45. Clinical um, work with patient before. care. Or yeah, that's total, or that's total care, managing yeah, and, and clinical work. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a bit of both. So if I'm mm -hmm. doing, uh, it's including notes, it's including owner responsibility. Got it, 45. Staff to, development. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, uh, and then my PT, my other PT was doing about 20. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then do you do any yeah. weekend work or did you do any weekend work prior to COVID? I refuse to do weekend work. Good, good. That's I'm the goal. That's why products, that's yeah. that's the flexibility when you have your own business, then you could choose not to work. Weekend. I know. Yeah, Very you got to be rigid. I was rigid with the weekend. Thing. Yeah, I realize I keep yeah. saying pre-COVID. It's like we have BC era now, like before COVID. <laughs> yes. Post-COVID. I, I would yeah. say it's like the snap in Avengers with the Thanos snap. There's pre-snap and post-snap. Yeah. <laughs> World yeah. is different now. <laughs> got it. Yeah. Um, so cancellation rate. Again, the, you know, hot topic. Uh, do you keep track of those? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we what were, is your uh, what is your cancellation rate? Or what was your cancellation rate pre-COVID? Cancellation rate was normally for us uh, at one point it was at thirty five percent. That's huge. Um, so we yeah. yeah, it was really bad. So we instilled a lot of different ways. So I got the reminders on WebPT that constantly remind them. I have my staff call. Um, Every day, if you miss your appointment, is that a paid we feature? Or is, it, is, it, is it a free feature in WebPT? It's uh, they ha it comes with a uh, like two hundred or a hundred reminders or something. Got it. Then you have to pay to get more reminders. Got it. Uh, but it was it. they get the reminder text messages and emails. Sure. Yeah, every sure. visit you get it monthly. Uh, and then I have my I set up a, a Google text message just like the Google text. Sure. So we set up a different number. So we text our patients anytime they miss their appointment. So the day they miss it, they get a text. Mm -hmm. And then they, we follow up with them on a weekly basis. Sorry, you do, you do that manually? Uh, so your office uh, yeah. staff text, hey, was everything okay? Yeah. You know, you missed your appointment today. Do you have, yeah. uh, so I guess for your area, I'm curious to know, do you have a cancellation policy where you charge those patients for missing their appointments or how does it work? We've tried. Uh, and again, in, in my area, it's not, it's, it's a, it's a urban area. It's not an affluent area. Right. So right. So that's why I asked. they're not even, yeah. So it's, it's going to be more discouraging for them to come to therapy. if right, They know right, they have right. to pay Definitely. a cancellation fee. Uh, but we do tell them, you know, a lot of them are coming either if it's workman's comp or even their insurance, that if you do not come and show consistency, your insurance will deny you. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, we've had that. We've had patients who had 12 visits authorized, but then they show, Hey, uh -huh. you're not coming in, so we're just going to cancel it Got out. Got it. Got it. Okay. Very good. So what is your rate now? You said it was 35%. Did oh, you guys decrease now it? Now it's at 11, 11 to 12% now. Okay, good. So that's like actually so based again, in my survey, that's been national, like about 10%. Anything yeah. over 10%, that's great numbers, you know? So that's, yeah. and that's, uh, I found that's how a lot of owners incentivize their staff, uh, you know, so the, those bonuses are, uh, based on the yes. cancellation rate. Okay, very good. Yeah, we, yeah, our, our bonuses are based on the number of patients that come in versus the cancellation rate. If we're able to have a high, if we have a high turnout, they have bonuses because nice. If we have a high turnout, that means they work harder. Is, is so it quarterly, HR, monthly, annually? How do you guys do your bonuses? Weekly. We do it uh, bi-weekly. So with oh, your wow, paycheck. beautiful, beautiful. Wow, very good. Yeah, very good. the numbers. I, I always feel like if we had a good week. And my staff should be rewarded for it because Great. they work hard. And Very good. They sent out Very more good. offices that more patients. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we spoke about cancellation, EMR system. Uh, I'm interested in reports. So what are your, I like to say top three, but I know you're good with your numbers. What are your top five reports that you say you would use on a monthly basis? 
Reports as in like the objectives or? Objective uh, reports findings? meaning like numbers, referrals, uh, visits, like uh, I'm guessing your EMR system report to use. Oh, okay. Uh, so we do look at, uh, so we do look at visits as, as one of our- Total amount, right? The number of okay. visits, the total amount. Uh, we look at our lost patient log to see how many visits we've lost. So uh, I like to look right. at how many- That's, after, that's after the eval, right? The lost patients, the ones that completed yes. eval and never came back, got it. Yes, or the ones that have completed three or four visits and never came back. I like to look at that to kind of see what's the average number of visits a patient will will have before they kind of go off the grid. You know, uh, I noticed that it's roughly about six or seven. So the ones who kind of go missing, they'll go missing around on an average about six or seven visits, they'll kind of disappear. Got it. Um, if, I see, if I see that the average starts to go lower, meaning they, it's only three visits or two visits, that means that I'm not doing a good enough job in either educating or we're not doing enough job in keeping them there. Mm -hmm. so I, I like to look at those reports as well. Makes sense. Um, yeah, uh, the referral report I'll look at, we talked about, is see what, who, what doctors are referring sure, where. Sure. Uh, uh, the billing report will just not only to kind of get the numbers, but to see where the trends are. So I'll look at a billing report of last year versus this year and say, you know, compare the months and say, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. month we were here, this month we were here, or this week, and this month we were here. Like, mm -hmm. where were we in 4th of July of 2017 versus now? Kind of get an idea, are we trending upward or downward? Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'd probably look at, uh, not on WebPT, but on my QuickBooks so I can see, like, the financials to see a yearly report of where we were versus what we built last year, where we were the year before, and versus, mm -hmm. like, versus mm -hmm. what we build versus what we took in. So mm -hmm. my, my billing report one year showed, you know, a number, and the next year showed a higher number then my intake should reflect that. If my sure. intake does it, that means that we missed out on a lot. Uh, and then my Excel sheet, we also, after we put in all the amounts, I have the tally on the bottom to kind of tell me what we grossed that month. And so I'm able to see one month versus the next or one month versus the previous year to see if the months align. And, and if I don't see growth, which I Sorry, so the gross uh, revenue, is that something you guys calculate your own or you get it from TheraBill to so gives you a total amount yeah. for the month? No, that's that's through that Excel sheet I was telling you about, or the uh -huh. Google spreadsheet. So you, you'll add it. So your your admin will add it all together, all the visits, right? And yeah. Calculate the total for gross revenue. Yep. Okay. So it leads yeah, me to my next question, money. actually, for growth revenue. So you got are you guys growing, or you've been pretty consistent in the past couple of years? So I feel like the last two years we've kind of reached a, a plateau, uh, which is good because we're, we're at our max capacity in terms of location. Sure. Uh, which is why I was looking to open up a second office once this PT would be trained, because that tells me that this office has maxed out is ready. Got it, yeah. And it's, it's, as long as it stays consistent, it's great. But sure. now it's time to tap into a new place to, to get that maximum value. Makes sense, okay, very good. Uh, so what are your favorite, I'm, I'm, so I'm gonna talk about uh, continue ad now. Uh, what are your favorite continue education uh, resources uh i love the great lakes courses i don't know if you've taken any um no, actually no, i actually never them mm -hmm. great lakes oh yeah they're so they're cimt certified i'm um, cmit certified manual therapist mm -hmm. and they uh they're based out of michigan but they are all over the country uh i took my first course when i was working for sports care sports care had a contract with them and it changed completely changed the whole way I look at treating. Uh, I think before that it was a lot of like doing a lot of massaging, a lot of cross friction, deep friction, mm -hmm. you know, but they kind of changed my mind. They, they, they made me use more muscle energy. So less effort for me, less pain on the patient and a better result. Mm -hmm. uh, so after I took the Great Lakes course, actually me and my director took it together. We started doing it on our patients. We found, you know, pain was going down from from nine to a two, from eight to a zero within one or two sessions. So wow. that, that nice. hooked me, right? And then yeah. I looked at, I did the, took the lumbar course, their shoulder, their elbows, everything. Uh, I do like the Maitland courses. They were cool too. The, um, uh, what was the other one? Uh, the movement with mobilization, that name escapes me right now. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot the name. I completely forgot the name. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it's uh, a... <laughs> It's a, it's a known brand. It's a known name. I, you probably know it. I just don't, it's a lot of movement with mobilization that, that they mm -hmm. do. 
so I utilize that and that helped a lot too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are my top three brands. Thank you. That's yeah. good. That's good to know. Very good. And I guess, uh, last two questions is, uh, I, uh so you, you say you're married and do you have any kids? Yeah. Three. That's why this is not here anymore. <laughs> three kids. Got it. So you have, uh, yeah. you have a lot on your plate. Okay. Married, running a clinic, managing. Uh, yeah. Everything. And then I actually had my, uh, my second kid was born three weeks after I opened this clinic. Initially. Oh, wow. That's tough. I'm sure it was a really tough time. Yeah. I opened here March 24th. She was born April 17th. Wow. <laughs> Congrats, man. Yep. Three is a good number. The, the third one was born when we moved. Uh, he was born a week after we moved into the new clinic. <laughs> you, find, you find the best time huh, to start. <laughs> I like, yeah. I like to just really pack it on. Pack okay, on yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So what is your long-term goal? Oh, well, really what I want to do uh, is I want to become a clinic. So instead of having a franchise where I own all these multiple clinics and just employ uh, therapists, I think therapists have an innate nature to be employees versus being owners. Um, in many schools, in the school I was in, I was, I'm trying to learn to break that habit. Mm -hmm. We're taught how to be employees. All our questions are always, if your director does this, what do you do? If There's nothing that teaches you how to be an owner. Uh, which is why I'm all, I always say we're behind the ball with Kairos because they know how to run a business. So we should learn how to run it. Mm -hmm. And so my goal is to give PTs an opportunity to own without having the quote unquote risk of building it, right? Always having the backbone of an experienced clinician or owner that's done it before. And so it's, it's very simple. Just I bring in a PT, they work with me for a little bit, and then we go open a clinic together. And then he'll have the higher percentage. Uh, I sure. help him. I give him the blueprint. We get all the paperwork ready for him. So he's running the clinic. And as time goes on, he'll be kind of intertwined with the business. He'll know how the business runs. And mm -hmm. we get a third person and do the same thing and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. The advantage is that when we all do it under the same name, uh, when we come to apply, when we come to talk to an insurance company, let's say, we want to renegotiate our rate. We have leverage. We're not speaking right. as mm -hmm. mom and pop clinics that we have leverage. Exactly. And we don't have to have leverage as a company. We could have leverage as one company with multiple owners. So mm -hmm. if you own a clinic, you can make as much as your heart desires. No one is taking from you from your hard work. You know, mm -hmm. so you're a business owner, but then you have the connection of mm -hmm. a company. And then we have that intertwined training for 10 clinics deep. We can cover each other. We can teach each other. Right. We can have so this model that you mentioned, together. this model you mentioned, this is a franchise model yeah. anyway, because what happens, this is how a lot of models, a lot yeah. of franchise models started. At some point when you have yes. uh, good cash flow coming in, it takes too long to start a clinic. So that's when you start acquiring clinics. And that's what, you know, I've spoken to a lot of people in the industry, right? So they will acquire a clinic, will give you uh, a, a percentage still, and give you some, obviously some yeah. cash and you continue running, operating the clinic, but now you have a significant amount of money uh, in your pocket uh, and you still have yeah. interest, you know, and you're still involved and, you know, you don't have, as, as, as the, you know, company that acquired, you don't have to put in as much work because you still have personal interest there running it. So yeah, yeah exactly. very good. It's, it's the franchise model. Um, I guess we don't apply it. We keep applying it. Like, uh, like if you, I don't know what's in New York, but in New Jersey, we have JAG, uh, Jag, Jag is very popular here now. I have my friends that just uh, got acquired, you know, maybe seven months ago by uh, by Jag One. Yeah, True. my Princeton office was acquired by Jag as well. Oh, interesting. And, uh, that and was recent. Was it, that recently? That was no. It was. Uh, I thought I just saw them acquiring then. another office in Princeton. That's why I was curious. Maybe this is the one in Can Do. You'll see it, it. in okay. the gym mm -hmm. in the Princeton Center. Uh, but it, it, the only difference is they keep treating them like employees you know they hire them they give them a salary mm -hmm. uh god i mean you probably see the reimbursement rates in some of these places and it's like it's, it's almost a crime to what you're paying the therapist versus what you're getting mm -hmm. uh they're not getting true bonuses you know so if a therapist treats four or five patients in an hour they get paid the same as if they treated two patients an hour yeah so they so have the productivity right mm -hmm. yeah so where's the incentive for the patient to, for the therapist to really be productive sure. absolutely know, Human, human nature is going to make them not want to work, uh, especially, mm -hmm. you know, when you're a, a hard manual therapist and you've worked on a patient mm -hmm. after a while, you get, you start to get tired. And as you get older, 
you want to get rewarded for the amount of people that you see. Sure. And the bonus structures are not are not enough. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the bonus structure in in, in um, sports care was like you get five dollars for every patient that you see over eighty patients a week. That's not really an incentive. Absolutely. You know, yeah. knowing how much they get per patient. So I think I want to I want to break that that uh, employee mentality that a lot of PTs have, and I see it. I still teach at the uh, school. I'm a TA for their one of their courses, and I also co-teach with the dean um, with the dean of uh, admissions. There, we teach a business course, and we talk about business. And I always ask the question, how many of you want to start your own? And out of 70 students, maybe 12 will raise their hand, and then out of the 12, five of them are unsure. The rest of them want to do partner because they don't know what it would take to be on their own. Uh, if I told yeah, them, what if uh, an experienced chiropractor can Yeah, they would rather take the easy way out because they have no idea what business is. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I wish I could break that culture and kind of yeah. just say, okay, listen, instead of you being so scared, let's kind of meet halfway. I'll give you the blueprint, but you own. You run it however you mm -hmm. want to. We just have our name there. Just yeah. make sure it's good quality. Sure. I think uh, APTA has a few programs on this. Uh, uh, and then I interviewed Dr. Larry Benz, uh, uh, CEO of Confluent Health. And he has something, uh, slipped my mind now, the name of the program, but it's something like MBA for physical therapists. So it's a course where they you know, focus okay. strictly on running, uh, you know, starting and running a business. And it's very popular, you know, because uh, they Confluent Health over 220 locations. So it's, uh, it's one of the bigger corporations yeah. out there all right thank you so much for your time it was really really informative for me to see you know because um, i've been i've been interviewing a lot of uh owners that do out of network kind of uh you know run out of network clinics and so it's interesting to see a clinic that's in our work and you know how you guys uh, do your day-to-day -day operations uh appreciate your time yeah thank you i oh, appreciate it thank you so much